What is up, homies? Welcome back to another episode of the Chexicans Podcast here on the Chexicans channel. What's going on, everybody? Give us a thumbs up if you can hear us. Yeah. All thumbs I up in the chats, it. please. I can hear it. Hector, and can you hear? It should be fine. Are can, you hearing? So. If you can hear us and see us. You're live oh, and we can hear you. Okay, Perfect. thanks, Wes. Thank thanks, you, Wes. Wes. Uh, hope you're all having uh, an amazing night. Tonight's going to be a very fun episode. We are doing our DC Extended Universe Retrospective. <laughs> Postmortem, RIP. <laughs> it's almost like a pre-snap recap, kind of, yeah. But for DC <clears throat> and a franchise ending, a little bit, so, yeah, a little bit, yeah, 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 exactly. Um, mm. We have now all seen Aquaman, yeah. um, which yes. we had all, already that seen in the last week. episode yeah, too. That was last week, so that was kind of the remaining piece of the puzzle, no. along with Blue, Blue, Be- Beetle. Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle is the last yeah. one, yeah, which yeah. Augustine yeah. had not seen. And I just saw it. <laughs> yeah. We watched, it. we watched it on Monday. Immediately bought it on 4K. <laughs> the moment we started talking about the movie while they were talking, I was on Amazon buying this movie. Yeah. And it came the next day. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> nice. So, nice. So now we've all seen every thing in mm-hmm. the franchise mm-hmm. and we did record our reaction to Blue yeah. Beetle so that's yeah. in, yeah. in yeah. the works. That's going to mm-hmm. be happening mm-hmm. on Patreon and on YouTube mm-hmm. soon. Mm-hmm. Sooner than later. Um, so then just real quick before, because I already know we already got a super chat question. We do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> before we even answer that, let's just real quick run through what the whole franchise is, just as a reminder. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we had, uh, and Adam, you'll give me the years, Man of Steel. 2013. <laughs> Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. 2016. Suicide Squad. Also 2016. Wonder Woman. 2017. Justice League. 2017. Yeah. Uh Aquaman. 2018. Shazam. 2019. Mm-hmm. Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. COVID 2020. Mm-hmm. COVID 2020. Yep. And then during the pandemic, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Uh, the, the next year, actually. 2021. Yeah. yeah. But so, we still had Wonder Woman 84 in 2020. That's right. Oh, and that was a simultaneous day. That was on re- Max. That was on HBO Max mm-hmm. and in theaters or just on HBO just Max? Just on HBO Max, yeah. yeah. Weird. Yep. And then they had a 3D version that they put on 3D Blu-ray. Yeah, mm-hmm. which I, I haven't seen. I haven't seen that either. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll do it for the channel. Maybe not. <laughs> um, <laughs> movie was so bad. we're in the pandemic. It's yeah. already kind of yeah. weird. All this stuff has come out. Uh, 2021 is the Snyder Cut of Justice League, which Mm -hmm. to some is canon. To others, it's just kind of like an additional take on what came out. And it's still kind of kind of unclear some people will say no it's definitively because the flash mentioned something that happened it's like well that doesn't necessarily mean right the franchise decided to take that over the what was released theatrically Mm -hmm. right in 2017 then after that we had in 2021 the suicide squad that's right (laughs) after that in 2022 Uh Mm -hmm. we we had had black adam no Mm -hmm. before that tv show oh peacemaker the one oh right i think that was the end of 2021 actually uh into 2022. I think Let's it was check, beginning of. I think it was like January of 2020. Oh. I I can't I can't remember. I yeah. can't remember. But Google it. Checking it, the date. Give it a Google. 2022. 2022. January 13th. Mm. Um. Yeah. So then after the one TV show, we go back to 2022. The next movie is Black Adam. Then in we're already in last, last year, year where everything came out. There was a bunch. Yeah. Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Mm-hmm. The Flash. Mm-hmm. The best one, Blue Beetle, and <laughs> uh, and then it ended with Aquaman and the Lost, Lost Kingdom. Kingdom. Yeah, and there's yeah. your timeline right there. So then, yeah. what's our super chat question, Augustine? <laughs> it was from Evan, the yeah. man Evan, yeah. our friend Evan, personal friend Evan. Yeah. Uh, what DCEU movie surprised you, and which disappointed you? So it's a loaded question, Evan. Yeah. How dare you? That's a great question, though. <laughs> I think. The uh, I, I normally I would say Blue Beetle, but this isn't mm-hmm. really the question because yeah. I kind of expected to love Blue Beetle because right. I love that character. What surprised me, Birds of Prey. I did yeah. not mm-hmm. see that movie mm-hmm. with Ewan McGregor as the villain. Right. You know, with like that take on Black Canary and um and uh Huntress, you know, Margot yep. Robbie. Like th- that was all such a surprise for me. Yeah. And it was the first rated R DCEU movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That one yeah. was the first. Not the Suicide Squad. Right. Not Zack Snyder's Justice League. It was right. that one. So I'm like, that surprised me. The one that disappointed me most, I have to say, Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Justice League should be more disappointing because it's the first full team up of everything. But yeah. I was set up to be like, I don't know about Justice League because of what happened on all the behind the scenes stuff that yeah. we, had, we had learned. Like, uh-huh. oh, like the director stepping down and they're bringing in Joss Whedon. 
It was like, okay. And so when that Frankenstein... <laughs> What's the deal here? When that movie was released, I was like, yeah, okay. This sucked. Yeah. Yeah. This was not yeah. great because of all the stuff. But Batman versus Superman, I still remember when we all went to go see it that opening yeah. night. That was yeah. weird. Well, and... Not yeah. fun. Especially no. because... Well, you and I got to see Man of Steel together. We went to the Arclight in Hollywood to see really? it. Really? Yeah. In 2013? Yeah. I don't even remember that. Yeah, we did. Wow. Because I got early passes and I was like, well, I'm sure Hector would appreciate this. Because we barely, we, we knew each other, but like yeah. not that well. <laughs> yeah. We didn't know each other that well. Yeah. Um, oh. But I remember going to see the movie and we walked this out of it. This franchise is huh? our friendship. This yeah. whole yes. franchise. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. I remember Weird. walking out and I, I actually, to a certain extent, I, I actually enjoyed Man of Steel. Me too. There's definitely things about it that I didn't love and it didn't feel Superman to me. But the reason I gave the movie kind of a pass on it was because it wasn't a Superman film. Mm. It wasn't about Superman being sort of in the prime of being a superhero. It was still sort of the building blocks to him getting there. So I thought, okay, I don't love some of the choices, but, particularly but, him killing General Zod. But yeah. we were there. We were yeah. in it. Yeah, but I was we like, like but, let's go. But if this is a building block, yeah. and now the world is kind of weary of Superman, and the next film yes. convinces us why Superman is the that greatest hero, hope. then yeah. great, I'm all about it. So yeah. when I... when they were including Batman. I thought, oh, cool. There'll be a little bit of like animosity between the, between the two characters. But like in World's Finest, yeah. the animated movie, <laughs> they have a moment where they like talk about their morality and their moral mm -hmm, compass. Mm -hmm. And they understand what they are yep. and who they represent and what they represent. Yeah. So I thought when we get to that point in the movie, it's going to be it's a Batman and Superman movie, mm -hmm. not a versus movie. And then that movie, that unfortunately, didn't, didn't do that. Yeah. And the my favorite character ended up getting, you know, killed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Killed. And I was like, wait a minute. This is not like... The death of Superman is like one of the greatest, most like yeah. iconic moments in comic book history. Yeah, this really doesn't feel earned to me. No. So when we came to Justice League, I thought, okay, well, they're going to bring Superman back, obviously. Yeah. So the anticipation already wasn't there. Yeah. The only thing that made me hopeful was when we went to Comic Con and we saw the first trailer, and it had come together. I think for yeah. Justice League, sure, for sure, Justice sure. League, and I thought, okay, yeah, it's embracing a little. It feels like it's embracing a little bit more heart, a little bit more hope. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm yeah. excited about where it's going to go and then the takeover happened yeah and we went to go see it and because we had been in this like weird sort of phase in the internet where everyone thought that we hated everything that Zack Snyder <laughs> ever touched <laughs> I gave that Justice League movie kind of a pass and I was yeah. like you know yeah. what considering sure. everything that happened sure. it turned out okay I didn't love it but it wasn't until after finding out everything that happened that I was like well now I want to see the other version of the movie oh, and, and it's, see it's, how it turns out. It isn't just that. It was also just like, I think I was at such a kind of a rock bottom mm -hmm. for, for my feelings about those characters. The, the year plus of abuse that we really, you know, people harassing us. It was bad. Us. It was, it was yeah. really, really it's bad. It's so unnecessary. Go look at those that, comments of Suicide Squad. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, that, the, the reaction we did. The teaser trailer. I was yeah. just like so like mm, about the whole things mm -hmm. that when, yeah. when Justice League the movie came out, I remember feeling really deflated and just kind of like, all right, man, it's out and this is what this studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe the what the first director and the second director it's it's That's pieces what of what it's on. pieces of what they both wanted to do. Right. But it was the studio and this is their take. And yes, they're trying to make up for the joyless experience. No joy mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. Batman versus Superman. And I was just like, all right. I kind of felt like Frodo with the ring. I was like, it's done. <laughs> okay, you he know. didn't drop it on Hector. Come on, man. No. Did you even watch these movies? I don't know. Jesus <laughs> Lord, this podcast is he, over. I felt this, like we're shutting. Shut it down, Adam. I felt like Frodo, where he passed out, and somebody else had to take it to the to the yes. finish line. Yeah. You know, but yeah. um. So and there were some things, little moments of hope, and I don't know who to credit for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether it's either or. Right, I mean, right, right. Did, were there moments that I enjoyed in the director's cut, the yeah. Snyder cut? Sure. Yeah. But it, there's also stuff in there that I was just like, this doesn't feel like it's absolutely. I mean, if anyway, I'm being honest, four hours yeah. is just too much for me. Yeah. It's too much. Sorry. It was. It was. It's but, in the bone. It's, but it's too much. I still remember watching, and just real quick, the, the next super chat I got here, this is from Justin saying, just here to say, watch Lost. And that the lack of flannels from Augustine and Adam is whack as hell. <laughs> it's whack I'm as hell. I'm sorry. I, only I, own I, one. Get, I agree. I didn't do this on I purpose. But I only own one flan flannel. <laughs> I remember the night we were watching Batman versus Superman in yeah. the theater. I was sitting next to Augustine, and when Batman starts killing a bunch of dudes yeah. in the car, right. like it's it's unquestionably murder. <laughs> right, right. There's right, no right. debate. There's uh -huh. no, you know. Uh -huh. Augustine leaned over to me and he goes, this does not sit well with me. <laughs> and I still remember that to this day. Yep. I just remember. <laughs> yep. 
I did. Oh. I'm right there with you, dude. I, I for, until you said that, I forgot what I had said. Yeah, yeah. yeah but you're, you're that's what you said. This the moment, does not. Sit the moment right the first person me. died, I was like, oh. <laughs> so, this anyway. is what we're doing. Anyway, for yeah. me, I think my most surprising moment. It's not in the films. It was watching the Wonder Woman, the first Wonder Woman trailer. Yeah, I oh, screamed. Yeah. We, we saw it at Comic Con. Yeah, we were yeah. next to Alex Puccinelli mm-hmm. because it was Alex's first. Yeah. Comic Con, and we were all there in the line. And he was so excited. Naeem was there. We were there. Like yeah. people were there. The vibes were right. Mm-hmm. Watching that Wonder Woman trailer first time, the whole room screaming, just like everybody was super hype and excited. Yeah. Luckily, that movie ended up being a banger. Yeah. yeah. Luckily, that yeah. movie delivered on the promise, right? Right. Right. Uh, but as far as movies go, one of my favorite, most surprising moments in the movies was you and McGregor. Is you and McGregor right? Yeah. As the villain in, in Birds yeah. of Prey. Yeah. Yeah. He made me laugh so much. <laughs> I fucking love him yeah. in that character. Yeah. And uh, like, I had a look lot at of his fun. little head. Ooh, yeah. right? Ooh. <laughs> it was such it was such like a fun different take on a villain. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know why more people don't think that villains can't be funny. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like would they just yes. have to be just straight up like murderous, ugly, right. like you know, mean that, people all that, the time. Yeah. Badass mean people. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just weird. It's weird. But yeah. um that was really surprising to me, and I had a lot of fun with that movie. I yeah. think my biggest disappointment, it's really hard. Let me look at this movie list again. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> biggest disappointment. <clears throat> Ew. It's a toss-up because this movie was really bad, but also with this other movie. It's a tie between Wonder Woman 84 and The Flash. Mm. Yeah, I get it. It's a tie between because those two movies. Wonder Woman one was so good. Yeah, that you were like the actually. No, you're right. Wonder Woman eighty four. Yeah, the, the sequel is going to be, and then it was that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas yeah. the Flash, again, we had kind of heard of some like right. reshuffling. We I already was, went into it thinking like this is going to be yeah mucked, with the whole with. Ezra Miller thing. I think yeah. I, I was, the disappointment yes. lasted for so long. Yeah, that I was just like, oh man, this yeah. just seems like it's never ending, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it just wasn't ending because the movie just kept getting pushed back and pushed back, yeah, and right. it was just. Right. Right. It was just torturous. Yeah. Torturous. So, yeah, yeah I think that's got to be mine. The Flash was the last sort of, like, Justice League spinoff that they announced. Right. Yeah. And that we were sort of promised. There was no Green Lantern movie. Yeah. Because there wasn't a Green Lantern in Justice League. Right. There was no Cyborg movie. There, you know, we mm. got an Aquaman and we got Wonder Woman before Justice League and Aquaman after. So we were... We never got a Justice League Part 2. Yeah. We mm-hmm. never got a Bat mm-hmm. Fleck movie. We never yeah. got a Man of Steel yeah. 2. So this was the sort of... It felt like the last, like new thing because Aquaman 2 was in the works because we'd gotten the first one but right. yeah yeah, so disappointing by the way Aisha in the chat says uh, you're drinking a cherry limeade Waterloo damn <laughs> you're a thug bro she called you Whoa. a thug that straight shit up is, that shit is gangsta <laughs> alright that I'll shit is gangsta it. because you know what's funny is every time I have one of these and I pull it out of the fridge I think of the least gangster thing in the world <laughs> Waterloo yes <laughs> and I grab it like I'm at ABBA I'm like Waterloo do 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 <laughs> oh so like God. the opposite of gangster. Yeah. But thank you, Aisha, for telling me that this drink is gangster because it's not. It's, it's uh, not. No, it's not. Flat out, it's pretty gay. And, it's, <laughs> and I'm like, and there's nothing wrong I'm with like, that. I'm mm, like, I'm gonna have this great, this tasty today. Tasty oh water. I love this. I love this oh flavor. Cherry limeade. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> uh, we do have a couple more. Um, yeah, let's, from- wait to, let's wait to answer Shelby's okay. because that one's a little bit more encompassing of everything, mm-hmm. oh. which I think would would fit in and kind of like the wrap up discussion. I like mm, that. True, yeah, true, Shelby, great true. question. Yeah, it's a good question. question. I love, we will I love answer that. your question. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ronan Unchained, thank you so much, muchachos. When are you when are you getting a PO box? Want to send you something to add to your studio? Plus, are we finally getting it's all the- a panel at Comic Con? We it's, have a PO box. Right? Yeah, we do have a PO box. Yeah, we have a PO it's box. It's listed on our Discord, I think. Okay, and isn't yeah. it in the, some of the descriptions of the videos? It's should be. Should yeah. be, right? Should Make be. sure you address it to... Yeah. To... Me, it's it's got to be to Hector? Uh, no, it has to be to Abby. It has to be to Abby? Yeah, it's Abby okay. Trot's P.O. Box. Yeah. Okay. Well, make sure, so. make sure make sure you could, address you it could, you to Abby Trot. You could do Abby Trot. Care of work. Heroes yeah. Reforged. Check in yeah, the Discord, and if not, I'll get it to you, Ronan. And yeah, it's, it's right. Whatever. We'll whatever. It but We're it's using hers somewhere. for now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Comic-Con panel, uh, TBD. We need to actually register for our press. I may have a lead. I did it already. I may have a lead. Remember I talked to you guys about this. We may have a way in. Who knows? Potentially in the works. Potentially in the works. Thank you. Thank you. Well, no. I'm glad once registration I, time comes I around. forgot, so good. <laughs> you remember um, that conversation no, we I had, don't. <laughs> You don't? Okay. I know we had I it, do. but I don't I do. remember the conversation. I'll, I'll give you. you guys all yeah. the information. Okay, Jake's cool. question, similar, similar question. Yeah, what? 
Which one? It's the next super chat, right? Hey, homies, hope you're all well. Any plans for a pre-SDCC meetup? Love all the content, these new live streams. And side note, the cooking special was so worth the wait. Take care, lads. Thank you oh, so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank um, you. A pre-Comic-Con meetup. I don't know about a pre-Comic-Con no, meetup. I don't think we have time to do but, a pre-Comic-Con but, meetup. Um, a Comic-Con meetup. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, That's doable. We, we haven't even talked about Comic-Con truthfully yet. Yeah. We're still we're still yeah, trying to figure this out. Yeah, it's, we just moved spaces. It's January. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I feel Wait like we get our hotel locked in. I feel like, I feel like Iron Man. It. Like, yeah. don't harangue me with that. <laughs> yeah. that that's commencement speech is in June. Don't harangue. Like, I'm like, we got to do our taxes uh, first. What are yeah. you talking about? I know, right? Go Comic Con. I got a trip <laughs> coming up first. Well, Let me we'll, handle we'll that. definitely update yeah. everybody. Thank though, you for the enthusiasm. Thank you. Dark Knight of Anime. Thank you so much for that super chat. For me, Wonder Woman eighty four was just forgettable and disappointing. The more I sat on the Flash, the more I questioned. What they were thinking? Sure, dude, I get that. that what were they thinking? I get that. Crazy, dude. Yeah. Wow. I I thought I was watching the wrong movie for a while. <laughs> yeah. No joke. Like when the VFX uh, and that whole baby saving scene, I was like, mm-hmm. Yeah, this must be the the pre cut, right? Like yeah. this must be the the pre visuals that yeah. are just placeholders. Yeah. yeah. No, it it's was wild. bad. It no, was bad. Dude. Yeah. No, anyway, dude. It, was, it was bad. Anyways. Dude. Yeah. Anyways. <sighs> but yeah. So. I guess to continue our discussion, yeah. so we, we laid out the movies, yeah. kind of what our disappointments we, and we, what our greatest we, things are. How Now that the arc has kind of happened, yeah. officially or unofficially, it's gone. Like, yeah. it's done. James yeah. Gunn is officially starting fresh. Mm-hmm. In retrospective, mm-hmm. I don't want to say, like, how do, you, how do you feel like you can fix it or you would have fixed it, but, like, how do you oh, feel ab- that, about it? But like, that's a great question because yeah. it's, there's, it's like a perfect storm of, a bunch of different stuff that did not go right. Yeah. And right, I feel right. bad for all parties involved. Yeah. But it's also, this is what the, in my opinion, the main issue is. Warner Brothers leadership in their, frankly, earned arrogance of like, we know how to make movies. It's yeah. like, yeah, We're dudes, Warner Brothers. Yeah, dudes. But you guys don't know how to do this. Right. And you've had the rights to these comic book characters since the 70s. 76, I think. Yeah. And you have been making, you have under your noses... The movie studio, which doesn't give a shit about TV animation, mm-hmm. those people have been doing it right. Yeah, not only doing yeah. it right, but making, making, knocking it out of the making park, making cartoon shows that yeah. like have helped the DC brand more than anything oh, else absolutely. in history, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's gone unnoticed. Yeah, and you guys with your arrogance of pausing to even try to do this while the Harry Potter series was—that's the mistake number one. Mm-hmm. And I know that whoever made that statement. When someone was asked in the midst of the Harry Potter franchise popularity, ask some producer at Warner Brothers or some executive, and they said, and I'm, sh- and I don't think that that person probably still works at Warner Brothers today, because mm-hmm. that's the other part hey, of the. Oh my God, that's the, the other the leadership issue. has cycled through so many times yeah. since 2013. Yeah. That's, that's the other part of it. Exactly, that yeah. you're just like, oh, why are you guys trying to make anything coherent mm-hmm. if it's not Marvel Studios has had basically the same heads of creative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Since before Iron Since Man. Since 2006. Since them sitting down and being like, how do we start this? Yeah. And they're still there to this day. So that's like problem number one. Problem number two, that arrogance of Warner Brothers leadership going, oh, we'll get to that when Harry Potter's done. Mm-hmm. You guys messed up. Yeah. You missed the boat. Yep. You missed Absolutely. the ship. Like he, he, Marvel Disney's going to, sh- you know. Harry Potter was that massive franchise. Mm-hmm. For sure. It was, Harry yeah. Potter was their bread and but butter. They and we're leaving money on the table to yeah. have oh, 100%. two massive franchises. Yeah. I, don't at the same t- yeah. I don't disagree. I don't disagree with you. Yeah. But yeah. what I'm saying, to yes. go back to the horrible leadership, yes. it's like, oh, and we have our cash cow. Mm-hmm. Cool. For sure. Let's kill and, it. And again, it, you're right. I kind of don't blame them also. <laughs> <Yeah>. And Chris <laughs> Nolan had the Dark Knight trilogy going. And yeah. I don't blame the people who let that happen. Because like those movies were fantastic, mm-hmm. and Christopher Nolan is a great director, and I love what he did with that, those characters. The problem is Christopher Nolan loves Batman, not DC. Right. So it's right, like, cool, right, right. you guys paused yourself from 2005 to 2012, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that tripped you up. And then even when Batman Begins happened, and they went and did Superman Returns, nobody at Warner Brothers made it a mandate that they work together right, because they're right. like, well, we don't want to impede the creative process. Right. Okay, fine. Then you're not going to have a shared universe. Yeah. Right. And right. at the end of the day, unfortunately, with these characters and this type of IP, then don't bother. Right. Yeah. You know, if you're going to do a half ass attempt at Green Lantern, mm-hmm. you got a director who did Casino Royale, but like, does he give a shit about Green Lantern? Right. Does Martin Campbell care about Hal Jordan? Like, mm-hmm. th- does does Ryan Reynolds care about? It's just nobody in that yeah. world. I mean, you said yes to a sequel to Superman 2. 
Right. That's what Superman Returns is. <laughs> like, it's hello. Be- because they're movie people and all they understand, which, fine, but so they were like, well, we did Richard Donner Superman. Let's do that again. Well, we did, you know, uh, even now with The Flash, that's why Michael Keaton came into it. Yeah. Because someone went, well, we did 1989 Batman. We know that's, what we're doing. That, that's still a great movie. We got it, right? And you're like, that, got it needs, in the to, bag. that needs to be left in the pack. Like, you guys are mm. not. Yeah. So or you just, need to build towards something that mm. causes mm. that reason. So so then you get to the point of what was the, the next biggest trip up yeah. after that, that timeline of events. It's Zack Snyder. Mm-hmm. It's him coming in going, I did Watchmen for you guys. I right. did 300. Wow, those were really well received. Like, especially visually, mm-hmm. everyone's going, "You, oh. you know how to do this." You're What's the boss. On? Are we are we back? The we're... YouTube problem is happening again. Okay, okay. we're good now. Okay, okay. good. You're the boss. Like, it's, it's people at Warner Brothers had no take on it, mm-hmm. so he comes in with his. They asked him, "Do you have a take?" <clears throat> he thought about it and he goes, "Yeah, I do this." Well, it wasn't even that. It was Christopher Nolan and David Goyer having a take, I and know. then on Superman, yeah, and basically Christopher Nolan saying like, "Well, I'll find a director," and then yeah. picking Zack Snyder, yeah. But yeah. no one at the studio going, we should make a Superman movie that is going to be part of right. a shared universe. Right. It was Christopher Nolan going, hey, I think we have a really good idea for Superman. Right. And here's a director that I think would be capable of handling this. And why would Warner Brothers say no to either of those right. things? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Those are assured hits. Those were okay. you know bangers. Yeah. Yeah. And the mistake then was Man of Steel comes out and it's, uh. Mm. But who else is working on this stuff? Who else? And instead of putting in the... like, Look at how Marvel did... The, how they did Ant Man, mm-hmm. and then eventually did Ant Man Two and Ant Man Three, or they did mm-hmm. Captain America: The First Avenger, and however that was received critically and financially, they didn't bail. They knew they're like, well, right. we're building up to the Winter Soldier. That movie's going to be a bang, right, right. but we need to lay this groundwork. Nobody at Warner Brothers understood the Superman brand to go, mm-hmm. well, Superman Two should be him versus Brainiac, and it should be this and this and this. And right, this. right, right. They went, sh- they panicked and went, what makes this money? Batman. Sooner we get a Batman in here, the better. Yeah. Let's go. And that yeah. just took that's and and not an origin of Batman, the twenty year veteran. And I'm like, but <sighs> we don't even understand. We have no idea what right. these characters stand for in this universe if we're right. already seeing them at the end right. of their yeah, careers. Dude. It's skipping to Captain America: Civil War. Yeah. Instead of doing an Iron Man and a Captain America movie and an Avengers movie, right. and, you know. So there's just so many different things. And once that was yeah. rolling, I think that honestly, that movie. 2016's Batman versus <clears throat> Superman. It scared the studio with the mm-hmm. way it was critically mm-hmm. received, mm-hmm. Uh, with the way it was financially received. It scared everybody, and yeah. they and just from that point on, if there was anything that was a hit, it was because it was in spite of Warner Brothers, not right. because they were like they were like cultivating that. Right. Like yeah, Bird, right. to me, again, Birds of Prey came out of nowhere. Oh, how, 100%, how yeah. that was able to be rated R, despite the the yeah. normal thinking of it, you know, that it felt like at that point, it's like that is Warner Brothers just hands off, being like. We don't know what the fuck to do with this. Yeah. It's like, like Sony and Spider Verse, they were just like, leave it alone, yeah. Yeah. let it happen. Yeah. yeah. So, well, yeah. yeah. And and the other thing to to me that is weird, and I don't know if this is something that was set from the beginning or something that retroactively became the the norm after all of those events of those movies. But a lot of people talk about the Zack Snyder trilogy: Man of Steel, BVS, his Justice League film. Right. Right. Was it always conceived that Zack Snyder would do those three movies and that would be his trilogy? No. Or was the intention of like, we're going to do this, part one, part two, part three, but at the same time, we're going to spiral it out into its own thing? Sure. Which that's what you would think would be... He was a producer. He was a producer on Wonder Woman 1 Mm -hmm. and 1984, I think. So like he he had some sort of presence, input. Yeah, absolutely. Aisha says you're preaching, but (laughs) she also says that... She calls Zaslav Zoloft. <laughs> she goes, Zoloft better be taken. Zoloft? The- <laughs> That's funny. He doesn't David give a shit. So it, That's hilarious. Of, here's a creative so, okay. to him. So, Wern, Hector, your your idea is you would have fixed the creative leadership of the whole franchise as a whole. Right, so that was that, that's okay. what you feel like the biggest problem was. All, all this to say, my fix, if I had one, yeah. mm-hmm. it really would be people at DC Comics. Mm-hmm. Jim Lee, mm-hmm. like those people, <clears throat> you guys are now going to oversee the creative de- right. like right. because that's what Marvel kind of had. Yeah. People like you guys are going to hire producers to just do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Warner Brothers never thought like that. Warner yeah. Brothers is like, well, we can make a movie of these a year. We already make sure. movies. Right. That's my basic creative fix is like and also if J- Jim Lee or DC Comics people said, "Well, let's bring in some of the animation writers." Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know that movie people, movie producers are arrogant. And they go, we have to hire a screenwriter. Fuck that. Hire the people that made these characters work in animation. Right. That's it. Here's a side note on that. Yeah. Have you guys seen uh, the, um, what's his name? 
uh, Silent Bob director Kevin, Kevin Smith. Kevin yeah. Smith. Yeah. The story he tells about Spider uh, putting the spider in, in Superman. Oh my right? God, it's one yes. of my favorite where things. Yeah, where yeah. he's like, well, they wanted me to put a giant spider in it. I was like, okay, but yeah. then. You know, we didn't do it, and then he's watching Wild Wild West, <laughs> yep. and there's a fucking giant yep. spider. And yep. that's to your point about producers and, and yeah. creatives on the upper upper side yeah. being really arrogant yeah. about them oh, yeah. thinking they know yeah. the whole the whole yeah. you know industry. Well, and yeah. one of my biggest frustrations. So I worked at DC for a short amount of time mm-hmm. in 2012. 2012, mm-hmm. I think it was. For that year, I worked there, and. At that point, Man of Steel, we already knew it was coming out. It was coming yeah. out the next summer. Yeah. So my thought, so I, I started talking with, he, he was Jeff Johns's, um like right-hand man at DC. Okay. He ended up being a producer on a lot of the later uh, DC films. Okay. But I used to talk to him all the time, and I was like, well, so like, what's kind of the plan with the shared universe? And he's like, well, I can't obviously talk about it too much. But our big thing is that we obviously, you know, we we can't do the same thing that Marvel did. That's we got to do yeah. something different. And that I thought, was their directive. Oh, that and, was and, horrible. and immediately I was like, horrible. I was like, but wait a minute. I yeah. don't know if yeah. I don't think the priority should be we got to be different than Marvel. Yeah. The priority should be you got to be true to the characters in the comic books. Nah, bro, like, that's the priority. Nah, bro, we got to be edgy. And and <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and, and it wasn't necessarily that he said that, but it was more along the lines of yeah, but we also need to kind of like catch up to yeah. where they are. And I'm yeah. thinking to myself. But why? Yeah. There's no catching up. They already yeah. beat you. Yeah. yeah. They've already done an Avengers movie at this yeah. point. It yeah. came out literally that summer. It was the biggest movie of the year. So at that point I'm thinking Eric's. to myself, you did Man of Steel, do a sequel yeah. that that now shows us like why Superman is Superman. Yeah. And then from there, if that story inspires other characters in that universe mm-hmm. that's your, to then that's... become the heroes of their own city, then like yeah. You've all built, of, you're all building this, a universe. All, I, we've said all this before, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. all of this is bringing me back to like 2015, 2016. No. We were just, having these conversations. And, and truthfully, just being, nothing's changed. Just being mad. <laughs> with, <laughs> and with, even with Wonder Woman being a period piece set nothing's in 1917, changed. Yeah. It, even if you still wanted to do that and slightly alter that, like Superman wasn't the first superhero. That's He's fine. the first modern superhero. That's fine, yeah. But maybe Batman was already secretly operating for like a couple years. That's fine. But it was still on the down low and only really Gotham City was aware of it and it wasn't national news. But now that Superman has revealed himself to the world, oh shit, Batman's going out there, mm-hmm. Wonder Woman reveals mm-hmm. herself, Barry John Allen. Jones has been on Earth for years as a private detective. Hal Jordan. All that kind of stuff. Arthur Curry emerges as yeah. the Yeah, we like, find out that Atlantis listen. is real. Before Dude. before Endgame came out, yeah. this we're talking like midway through the MCU. Yeah, I still considered the DC animated universe the greatest example oh. of any oh. superhero oh content God. ever. Yeah. And this it, is before I had finished Invincible too. Mm-hmm. True. So to me, like yeah. Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, yeah. the the CG Green Lantern show mm-hmm. that sure. was out there, like all Batman of these Beyond. movies, Batman Beyond, like all Beatles, of this stuff. Superman, yeah, the animated yeah. series, Superman, all that stuff in conjunction. All of that was the best example of what superheroes should be <clears throat> and how you keep them popular and, yeah. and like, yeah. so you can still kind of revamp right. them because Justice League, I'm sorry, uh, Young Justice yeah. did an amazing job of like bringing these characters kind of up to speed, right? Agreed. And making them cool Agreed. and making them really likable and making you want to watch more stories with them. And and I'm great. I'm glad you brought up Young Justice. Uh-huh. Starts the story in an already established exactly. DC universe. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that you know? was the perfect way to do it. And the blueprints yeah. they needed was right Right there, and you guys are a, th- a thousand percent right that it was, it was leadership arrogance thinking that mm. they knew better. Yeah, <laughs> that they that these kids shows were just fucking kid shows. Yeah, right. absolutely. And animation writers and producers they don't know nothing. Right, I right, know right. everything. They don't, dude. Didn't, animation didn't, producers and creatives yeah. are some of the yeah. best, most creative people not, in the world because they have to be. They have not, to be. Not to say that like the people who worked on these DCEU films on the scripts for these yeah, films yeah. aren't passionate fans. Well, of course, yeah. But like, wasn't Chris Terrio a writer on Argo on on BBS? Yes. And he was on Argo and, and he was on League. Little Miss Sunshine. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, man, that's an award-winning screenwriter. I don't give a shit. Like, what are his bona fides? Like, mm-hmm. what, what, what is his sort of take on? And if, if again, at that level, that's that's, me. that's who they needed to get. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got the Oscar-winning screenwriter of Argo, right? And the Oscar-nominated screenwriter of Little. Well, Miss his pitch better be fucking amazing for I'm Superman. Like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but like Paul Dini has been doing this. He's yeah. in the game yeah. since Hello? 1992. Yeah. Yeah, he exactly. co-created Harley Quinn. Yeah, exactly. you, you really ha- need it, to listen to your creatives. Yeah, unfortunately, anyway. DC built a roof before they built a foundation. Damn. And it's like your pill. You didn't build up your Damn. pillars. <laughs> like you're, you're trying to put windows up, and there's no walls. I know we got a ton of super. We, chats. we have a ton of. Yeah. Super 
super job. chats. Let's we should start with one. okay. We should start with a Dark Knight of Anime. Thank you for the super chat, by oh, the way. I, did I already do that one? Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's but Lepi, thank you anyways. Lepi one eight two twenty dollars. Thank you so much. Wow, this is your so first much. super chat. Thank you. Thank also, you. Also, this question makes me sad because we would have hugged you if you came up to us <laughs> at the meetup. But since I was too nervous to talk to you, this is what Lepi says. Since I was too nervous to talk to you at the SDCC meetup, here's a super chat question. Who do you think was the most miscast character slash actor in the DCEU? Oh, Who great. would you cast that as <clears throat> that character as in Gunn's DC universe? That's a really good question. Dude, it's fucking Flash. Be- it's it's hundred uh, percent Flash. No, I got oh, one Ray better. Fisher. <laughs> no, I got one better. <laughs> Who? Because even Ezra Miller's take on Barry Allen's not my favorite. Mm-hmm. I can understand the energy they brought right. for the Justice League mm-hmm. ensemble. Right. Mm-hmm. Ray Fisher, maybe not my favorite, but I can understand his very sort of soulful and right. It's Lex Luthor, dude. Yes. Oh, <laughs> shit. That Look, one's so bad I forgot about listen, it. The, oh, shit. In my shit. opinion, the oh DCU my casting is pretty oh fucking God. solid. Yeah. Lex Luthor? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, that, shit, yeah. man. Hey, okay. I forgot here's, about here's that a tease. Here's a tease. Guys, oh guys, guys. It's so not guys, good. Guys. Oh. guys. Guys, next, guys. next week, I'm so excited about this. Next week, you're going to want to tune in again, okay? Same bat time, same bat channel. Yeah. We're doing a tier ranking of every DCEU yeah. character. I'm going to tell you right now, that Lex Luthor is going to be like F, bottom of the barrel. <laughs> that's that's not even on the chart. He's, and it's <laughs> Obliterate also, him. Eisenberg is an extremely talented yeah. guy, director, yeah. uh, filmmaker, yeah. actor. He's a, he's a fantastic actor. He has like, he's just, I'm not knocking his acting at all. Right. This is the number one case of miscast. And it's a case that I think was that famous story of he went into audition for Jimmy Olsen. Mm-hmm. Which, which even that, I'm like, that's a little too on the nose. I'm like, even that, I don't know if I would have, you know, I'm like, yeah. that's, I'm like, Eisenberg's too high profile for like a gym. Anyway, the point yeah. is that Snyder was, that he came in and basically was like, fuck you. I'm not doing, like, oh, you, uh, this is such typecasting. Like, he went in for this meeting, was almost kind of offended yeah. and like told him off that Zack Snyder was like, You've impressed me, you nerd. Maybe you should be <laughs> Lex Luthor. And it's just like... You look like Mark zuckerberg nobody ever, Nobody ever talks back to me. You, <laughs> yeah, that I'm like, this is just such a... <sighs> not even based on my like interpretation of the character from comic books or animation. I'm not even saying like Clancy Brown Superman or Lex Luthor from the Superman animated series. You know, that's my... Lo- I'm just saying even at the basic level of if you've never known that character... right. In the scenes between him and Henry Cavill as Superman, like I'm like, none of this works. No, none of him in the movie, the little jolly, is, yeah. jolly rancher, and he's kind of evil, and right. he, like none of it okay. worked. Because I'm seeing yeah. a lot of people in the chat also say Jared yeah. Leto's Joker. And that's right? what I'm looking at too. Oh. That and, one's really and, and that yeah. I am, I understand that one. Yeah, but the one thing that I will give Jared Leto is that at least he brought something slightly menacing and disturbing to Joker, which is, which fits. I guess. Yes, it fits. the design I, I don't love. The performance I'm he's, a little uneven with, but he's... he's that's also an F tier. I think yeah. it's 50-50, <laughs> the direction the Joker was going in, yeah. and gross Jared Leto. Yeah. yeah. Dude's gross. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Jared Leto. If that. you watch the show, you're gross, dude. I get that. I get <laughs> but, that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Great Let's, question. That was a really good question. But, okay, who is our new Lex Luthor then? One one actor. Who is but our no, new Lex Luthor? But no, wasn't the question... That, yeah, who was, would you cast But I thought the question was, James Gunn's. who would you cast as, like, Jesse Eisenberg in the new... No. Who oh, would you cast... Just, the well, character. Lex Luthor it, as. Let's character. pretend Nicholas Holt is not Lex Luthor for a second. I'm also not. Oh, is he already cast? Yeah. yeah. And I'm also, oh. but I'm also not 100% sold. I'm not that. sold on that either. Really? Yes. Mm. And I think he's also a fantastic actor. Yeah. But I really, I think the best version of a Lex is um, basically somebody who, even if he's the same age, <clears throat> frankly looks older than mm-hmm. Clark. Right, and Nicholas would go a little bit of a baby face. Yeah. He's a yeah. young guy. And he looks yeah. young. I've had the same pick for like 20 years. Who? who? Guess. Michael and you're gonna Ro- you're gonna Rosenbaum? be like that's a very typical Michael Rosenbaum, no. Brian Cranston, no, Billy Zane, yeah, oh I mean, that's a good one because yeah. because to me Luther has to be and I think Holt can do this but also mm-hmm. he just I'm going off of Nicholas Holt from Mad Max I'm yeah. going off of Nicholas yeah. Holt from The Menu he's really good or even like um, Renfield yeah he's really good yeah. at being like awkward and squirrely mm-hmm. you know and yeah. Leisenberg frankly right, it's right, a little right. it's a little, little Zuckerberg-y. Zuckerberg-y. and yeah. I and I just love a Lex Luthor who's Honestly, super good looking and yeah. charismatic, and right and square. Has, he's got to be yeah. like square and like stiff, and yeah. has the gravitas. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. when he's doing a press conference, that Metropolis goes, "Oh, I like him." Yeah, like yeah. That. yeah. That's how, and that's how I feel about Billy Zane. It's not yeah. as it honestly doesn't really have anything to do with the fact that he's bald. Yeah, but if you look at his performances 
in The Phantom and Titanic too, where yeah. he plays like a charming, charismatic yes. man, Still but a bad treats guy. Rose like shit. That's what I'm saying. It's very Lex Luthor, and yeah. he's rich in that movie, yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. he's uh, diabolical. This is You're this right. has yeah. been a great conversation. We're already at 7:45. I know. <laughs> well, we started late too. We started. We'll, we'll, we'll we started maybe little, like 15 minutes late, yeah. so we'll go 15 we'll go minutes over. Yeah. We'll go a little. Okay, Super let's chat. keep moving. Uh, Wes, Wesley, what are you doing? Giving us money? You're a mod, dude. We should be paying you. Yeah, we should be paying you. Thank you. Thank you. Wesley says there were a handful of projects I really love, but the new 52 didn't work as a creative whole agreed with that mm. i yeah. was so hyped for the new 52 i started buying single the issues comics, yeah. yeah and then i quickly just like yeah i, I that's, a, that that's a great comparison yeah. wesley mm. to Very the, the, the dceu is like the new 52 in comics mm. you know yes. leo soul five dollars yeah. first super chat donation thank you so much you guys rule the previous canon dc animated movies are all quite good yeah uh totally worth the uh, totally worth the watch p.s i'd love to see you react to blue eyed samurai I've been hearing a lot about that show. Yeah, I feel yeah. like I've been I seeing think, a lot about I think that. we should consider that yeah. one. Consider I think we should yeah. consider that one. Uh, I have to read this from Ryan Unicomb, our buddy Ryan in the chat. Cavill as Superman remains the worst ever live action take of Superman. Oh, hot whole, take. Whole thing was doomed from the get. Awful characterization. Cavill stunk. Hot take. I, I think I agree, but I, I, I'm i not putting it solely on Cat. It's mm-hmm. the script, and, it's, yeah, and especially yeah. BVS, like... Like we were saying, you yeah, wanted the, that the road that they went. You down. wanted that character to soar. Yeah, you wanted him to yeah. be as beloved as a Chris Evans. Superman was Steve just the Rogers. idea of a farmer from Kansas. It like, didn't work. What? <laughs> but but I think Cavill is a good actor at a specific thing, and I yeah. don't think he has the 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 sort of like <laughs> warmth and easy going. Cavill's just very stiff. He's very yeah. stiff in which, every, very which, stiff. every role, which is kind of a bummer because I, I think in. Um, the man from Uncle. Yeah, he's, he's a little pretty looser. charming, a little looser. Yeah, but even yeah. then, but he's still got that stiffness. Even I mean, then, yeah. it's that cannibal actor that he's acting with, Army Hammer. <laughs> right, he's right. the sort of. I was com- like, oh, he's what? The, <laughs> that guy's. He's the comic <laughs> relief in that. Right, yeah. And and Cavill's a little bit straight more of the straight man, which yeah. is again, he's perfectly it's, used it's, in Mission Impossible Fallout. I, like, I, I, think I don't disagree. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I think I think that's that's exactly what you're saying is what makes Tyler Hecklin such a good Superman. Yeah. Yeah. He's got that He's range where he can be like this. Tyler Hecklin as Dad Superman energy. is yeah. my favorite live action take on Superman. Yeah. So yeah. Good. It's so good. Yeah. If you're He's not so watching charming Superman and, and just, yeah. I think the Buddy moment there. that really sold me was when he's carrying that ice box. <laughs> yeah. He's oh, pretending yeah. like it's heavy. Oh, he's like, oh, yeah. oh, he's falling over with and it. I'm like, yes, that's away. exactly yeah. what Superman then, would do. But Ryan. <laughs> and then Ryan with the super chat. <laughs> he put a super chat. D- DCEU, worst live action, su- worst live action Superman all time. Stinky. 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 Okay. Stinky. okay. Stinky. Yeah. I'm sure Ryan will agree, though, that Tyler Hecklin is yeah. like. I mean, top I've notch. seen him tweet about it. Yes. Yes. Tyler Hecklin yeah. is yes. goat, dude. Yes. yes. He's up there. He's up there yeah, with, he's, with um, all the greats. So One more yep. season. I yeah. know. We still need to catch up on that show, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Next one. So Shelby Shelby has two questions. Okay. So Did we get we'll, to everybody else? No, no, no. So go, go for it. Uh, this is Shelby's other questions. Here's more DC-centric questions. Uh, was watching Nando vs. Movies, and he proposed Bradley Cooper as neglected father Batman. As neglecting father Batman. Like, like, to, he's, like, like he's Thomas oh, oh, oh. Wayne? No, or? no, no. Yeah. As, he's Bruce Wayne. But it, he's the Bruce Wayne who's sort of neglecting oh, Damien. Damian oh, I see. Because oh, he's the neglecting father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Batman, Batman is a neglecting father. Right, yeah. right, I mean, right. I, I think, I think Cooper is great. I don't mm-hmm. know if he himself would want to do that. No, I don't you, think you, so. You, you, yeah. need to, you need to get an actor he, who's. He's got so much other stuff going on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, you need to get an actor who's who's down to. <clears> it's sort of like the Ben Affleck situation. I think he was yeah. well cast. Yeah. yeah. I think he was well cast, but then. Once once you realize that he's in this first movie and it's not well received, mm-hmm. and the, the the sort of physicality that you need for that, and the commitment that you need for that, it's basically and what it, and his Robert personal Downey life was going through. Yeah, but you know? Robert Downey had to do that mm-hmm. for ten years. Right, yeah. he went from two thousand eight to twenty eighteen ish for his you know performance, mm-hmm. and I think that with that first movie being poo poo received, Affleck was like, I want out of this. Yeah, shit. I don't immediately keep doing this. Yeah, that and yeah. then the experience of Justice League. Yes. So you need to find an actor, uh, I think young ish actor, mm-hmm. maybe around the same age as the new Superman actor, yeah. to have that that parallel. I think yeah. he's I think he's 29, 30? 30. 30. 29. Okay, so maybe something like that with yeah. a Damian Wayne who's still like 10. Yeah. So that he could have had him at at, at 20. Mm-hmm. Young, you know, when he was really young and he yeah. went yeah. overseas and met Talia Al Ghul and then she got pregnant and but he never knew. Um, just to have a an actor who's like, I want this for my career. I want to do this for ten years. Right. I'm playing him from age thirty to forty, maybe even beyond. Mm-hmm. It's. I'm sure you you'll find the a man who wants that. The chat is gushing but... about Tyler, by the way. We <laughs> opened up the floodgates. Yeah. I love on, that you guys in the chat on. are loving Tyler yeah. because 
we all love it. Like it's a whole page of just Tyler Hecklin love. So I hope he's. I hope he watches. Yeah, <laughs> I hope right? he knows. I hope he knows how much we love him. I think he. I'm sure he. Does. I, I hope really so. hope so. He's I, done. Yeah. He's done conventions. Good. Yeah. He's done, but specifically you know. us. Okay. <laughs> I hope he knows us three. No one us else. Three Fuck everyone else. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> uh, the next question, Noah Guzman. Uh, thank you so much for the 4.99. Also for super chat. Real quick, just wanted to say happy you guys are back in full swing. Thank you. Uh, also, RIP to the DCEU. It was a ride. What do you guys hope for the DCEU or want? So what do we want in the future? That's a big question. That's a really big question, yeah. which I think we'll answer a lot more because this isn't our last full-blown yeah. discussion on this. And so. it's really too early to tell. Uh, yeah, it really is. I want to see, yeah. mm-hmm. I guess, Creature Commandos, but mainly it's Superman. Yeah. Once we see what that Superman is. Superman done right. Yeah, I, He's the tentpole. He's the yep. foundation. Yep. The thing that gave me a lot of hope for that project was that James Gunn flat out said that it's a four quadrant yeah. film. Because in yeah. my opinion, if you want Superman to be the character that potentially helps lead your entire universe, everyone has to love him. Yeah. If you're 10, if you're 50, if yeah. you're 35, mm-hmm. if, if you're, you're 70. If you're, if you're a man, if you're a woman, yeah. Yeah. if you're non-binary, right. you've got to be attracted to everybody in that cast. Yeah. Yeah. And I want, honestly, I want women to like Lois Lane yes. as yeah. much as I've seen women fans of MCU mm-hmm. like love Peggy Carter. Mm-hmm. Right. You see right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because totally. that first movie set up a great chemistry yeah. mm-hmm. and and let us be a little cheesy and a little mm-hmm. romantic and you need that. Yeah. You, you and, absolutely need God, that. man. That's part of what makes Superman great. It's but, that he's yeah. trying to tap into all of that, into right. all those sides that encompass being a human, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, yes. With him trying to fit in. Yeah. And it's really tough to write a character, an all-powerful character to do that mm-hmm. and to make him relatable and make people like him. Yeah. But it's all doable. It Look is. at Tyler Hecklin. He's there. He's currently there right oh, now. Oh, dude. Him and, him and Bitsy Tulloch. Is- it's oh so my God. good. They're the family pair. talks they have on the porch. Yeah, this is, can we just call this episode the Tyler Hecklin <laughs> yeah. love episode? Can we just change Tyler it? Tyler Hecklin love. Tyler Hecklin love episode. Because we'll, change the, <laughs> we'll change the thumbnail from yeah. RIP DCEU to Heart Superman <laughs> and Tyler Lois. Hecklin. Like, yeah. and do a thumbnail of us with our, with our shirts off and the Tyler Hecklin tattoo. <laughs> That'd be rad. <laughs> oh my god! All right, next question uh, by John McCoy. Thank you so much. Four ninety nine. We appreciate you. I know you fan. I know you guys are fans of Gendy Tartakovsky. Of course we are. Um, if you were to do a DCEU project with James Gunn, animated or live action, what would you like it to be? Oh god. god damn! Oh my god. That's oh my god. such a good question. Oh my god. <laughs> That's such a good question. And I would like him to I be know. the storyboarder of everything. Honestly, I, I want him to direct Plastic Man. Oh, really? Wow. Have you seen his, ho- his Hotel Transylvania movies? Yeah. Yes. I don't think they're great. I don't love they're the not Adam that great, Sandler no. comedy story, mm-hmm. but the animation, his characters. Oh, really yeah. Tr- yeah. He's got like, Looney Tunes style. Looney t- it's so, great. So put yeah. him on Plastic Man. Yeah, that would the be Plastic cool. Man character could be like the new Jim Carrey the Mask. Yes. You give it yes. to an animation guy. You give it to Squash and Stretch, bro. He right. would. He would <laughs> I oh think God. he could be creative supervisor on that film. Okay. I think Gendy shines with the nonverbal storytelling. Mm. I think Gendy could take a non popular character, Bawana mm. Beast, mm. Uh, fucking, what's one of those phantom ghost guys? There's like several ghost yeah. dudes. You, and I he know. could tell like an amazing story with like ethereal, kind I, of magical. The land that time forgot. The DC Comics war characters, they uh-huh. had a whole run. I, again, just a re-re- rereading DC The New Frontier. They're in there yeah. where it's like World War II guys that wash up on an island of dinosaurs. So it's kind of like Primal. It's there like you, go. you let Gendy there you go. You unleash him on a dinosaur, yeah. rated R, Ultra live action. Violent, just like, like action. Oh, guy. Yeah, yeah, Come yeah, on, yeah. get down, get yes, down. Like, absolutely. I'm so uh, curious if Gendy has any interest in doing live action. I don't know, sure. man. I'm I don't, sure. I, I hope he does Yeah. because Dude, he deserves to be on everything. He, just yeah. like Brad Bird, he needs to be everywhere. Like, yeah. Yeah, like his, his influences are not just animation. When you right. hear Gendy talk about he loved Arnold Schwarzenegger's Conan the Barbarian. Yeah. 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 So yeah, dude, if I was greenlighting a new Conan, I'd be like, get this motherfucker. On it, like you know, <laughs> Gendy, yes, what are you doing for the next three years? Yes, 100%. That's what I'm I saying. want Gendy to Especially, be in Marvel, I want yeah. him to yeah. be in DC, but I also want apparently he's got a lot of like other projects Animated. that he's working on right great. now, too. Right? Yeah, and sure. great. I want him to do that because Primal, we need to watch this on the show because you haven't seen it yet, right? not the whole thing. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, 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 you yeah, need yeah. to watch mm-hmm. all of it because he, it he, drags yeah, you to tears. He storyboarded Iron Man 2 sequences in Iron Man 2, the fight sequences. 
He can do more than that. Next question. Uh, we'll change the thumbnail to the Gendy Tartakovsky <laughs> love. <laughs> we're just going to start yeah, like, what is it? What no, is no, it? Where, yeah. where you can like cycle through them yeah, and they carousel. test which one does the best. Carouseling <laughs> yeah. them. Yeah, all the way through. <laughs> uh, back to Ryan's, <laughs> Ryan's super chat. Super uh, Superman is stinky. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he, has, he has another one where he says, uh, Corn Sweat, the actor that's playing Superman oh, yeah. now, is a John Williams nerd. Instant goat. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. He I'll has a whole that. TikTok where he's that. like, he's oh, yeah. listening to the Star Wars soundtrack and, like, and he's doing all the, the line the readings. The movie, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 He, he, While he's driving. Dude, that's a, that's a big nerd. uber nerd. Yeah. He's, he's uber he's nerd. Real, Hell yeah. He'd, he'd, he'd come on our show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, movies Clockford with the $20. Thank you so much. Very generous. Uh, it had its ups and downs, but I love the DCEU. My favorite will forever be Man of Steel. Batman vs. Superman and Wonder Woman. Plus, Henry Cavill and Ben, ben Affleck deserve better as a characters. Yes. Superman and Batman in the DCEU. Mm-hmm. You Agreed. are not wrong at Agreed. all, 100%. Yeah. Well, I think we kind of echoed all that yeah. in, our, in our conversation, yeah. right? I think he's... Well, yeah, Ryan Unicomb right. said stinky <laughs> about <I> mean, <laughs> Henry, but... Uh, look, you know. look I, yeah. I personally cannot think of a moment that it was like, oh, get this guy off screen. Right. right? It's not... I never no. had Except that moment. Except for Jesse Eisenberg. Well, I mean, right. yes, but I'm talking about Superman particularly. Right. But Henry, the heroes, Henry. Yeah. yeah, like Henry, yeah. there was never anything anything wrong with him. I think iconically, just looking at that beautiful yeah. man, obviously Superman. I'll tell you what, obviously Superman. I'll tell you what, in Aquaman two, I got a little tired of Momoa. I was, I Me said, too. you're too, a little, too. little much, you know, like, and I liked I him Momoa. in Aquaman one. I, I kind of felt the same right? way about Zachary Levi and Shazam. Yes, I yeah. was like, yeah. you, you're too dumb, bro. Yeah, like yeah. I was like, you're wearing thin on this. Right. So right. no, you're 100 percent right. But uh, um, yeah, so I, you, you're not wrong, and yeah. I think Ben Affleck could have done amazing. Yeah. But there, there wrong, is, there wrong, is wrong, wrong bat time, wrong bat channel. Yeah. There is basically. a universe somewhere yeah. in the multiverse where those two fucking rocked it. Where. Ben Affleck basically did the Robert Downey Jr. career, yeah, but with mm-hmm. yeah. Batman and yeah. played him. And, and the then, first and, and, movie was with and, what's his name, um, Joe Manganiello's character. Sure, yeah. sure. And oh, then, that's true. And then, dead, and dead something, dead, dead something, dead yeah. shot. No, no, dead shot. Dead shot. Dead stroke. I don't then, know. There's too many of those guys. And then there's a movie called Justice League: The Dark Side War, yeah. where Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne sacrificed himself against Dark Side, and we all cried. And yeah. we, like, there's a there's there's a world where all of that would have yeah, worked, yeah, 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 yeah. but. It's not our world. It's okay. Next, I know Next we got one, more. Yeah, we got one for 50 bucks, <gasps> dude. Oh, my goodness. Ella 6 9 Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. It's very kind wow. of you. Uh, thanks for telling it, telling it like it is, guys. Love your takes, in parentheses, for the most part. <laughs> I okay. want to know what you don't okay. like, actually. Let us like know. That. Let us know what I you like don't that. like. I like that, Biella. Uh, Thank you. Tag somebody in the comments. Uh, Ro- Rohith Dar in the chat offered up Lee Pace as Lex. I think that would be perfect. What do you oh, think? Lee Pace is He's tall. He's great. built. He's uh, incredibly charming. Even as Batman, honestly. He's a little... I mean, at this point, he might be a little too old for the current universe yeah, that's coming yeah, up, but yeah. in a multiverse... He would have been pretty great. I think, I think. about him. I mean, he was one, he was one of the bad guy elves in the Hobbit movies. Yes, I just think he's so polished. Even in like everyday life, when he yeah. does interviews, he's like so attractive and yeah. so polished. And I'm like, like I, don't, I don't know if he could be because Batman is Batman and Bruce Wayne. He could do the Bruce right. stuff, no problem. But I'm like, I can't see him in a cowl over a, a gargoyle, and ju- you know yeah. what I mean. I'm like, that's yeah. not your world, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your your dinner parties, you're f- <laughs> fancy and and great yeah. at that. But you're right. You yeah. Know. Yeah. All right. Well, we have one more. It's it's Rohit Dar, actually, who was oh. just mentioned All right. in, in BLS right. comment. Uh, who would you cast as DCEU Batman? My top picks are Jake Gyllenhaal, Lee Pace, okay. and Oliver Jackson Cohen. Oliver Jackson Cohen is. I don't is, know that is, actor. Uh, you do. If you've seen The Hunting of Hill House, he yeah. was the middle brother. Uh, he was also an Invisible Man. Isn't he a British actor? He is. Or like oh, British, I okay. think. Here's the okay. deal. Here's the deal. They got Corn Sweat as Superman. Yeah. He's an American guy. He is. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, you know, and they had Affleck as uh, Batman. Mm-hmm. And I thought Christian Bale was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I love my British superheroes playing American, mm-hmm. especially Tom Holland and Andrew Garfield. But I think Batman, I just get weirdly protective about these American superheroes where mm-hmm. I'm like, you got to cast an American actor. Even if it's 99% of the time a, a non American actor is nailing it, mm-hmm. they may slip up and go, um, Robin, Sorry. Robin, Sorry. I'm trying to explain something to you. And I go, yeah. there it is. There it is. No, nope, it takes <laughs> me right out. Like, just, just no. When, what if when Batman, they say, like, what if Batman goes, Nar! 
Yeah. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. Sorry, Ryan. I what know that was horrible. Say, yeah, Australian my Aussie accent, accent is bad, but he oh goes, no. No, the Joker. <laughs> no. He's not in my... Nar Joker. Nar Joker. <laughs> not in my city. Yeah, I just... Just even one little slip. I know. Tiniest slip. I know. I, I know. get so protective. Okay, uh, so we have stupid. to go back to yeah. Shelby's other yes. question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm trying to find it, though. Can it's you see it, Adam? Top, is yeah. it at the very top? Um, oh, there Shelby, it is. Shelby, thank you yeah. so much for that nine ninety nine super chat. Hey, guys, been confused on your taste lately <laughs> and wanted some clarity for what kind of stories you guys enjoy outside of comic book movies. Mm. Basically, what are some oscar -y, artsy favorites of yours? Oh, um, interesting. Well, you know I'm a big fan of animation. Yeah. So anything animated, I watch. Did you see The Boy and the Heron yet? Not yet. Oh, no, I, can't, I hear I that can't one wait. is fantastic. I know. I know. Um, but in our rewatch of you know the Ghibli movies, um, yeah. I love those those style of movies. Obviously, the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was great. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't you guys know. Hear Jason Aaron's doing the new Ninja Turtles comics. Yes, I did that's not exciting. Yeah. He's a great comic book yeah. writer. But that's here's the exciting. thing. Ninja Turtles, animation, that's still in the that's fantastical still, that's range. That's still in the like, We're fantasy. the sort of dramas, a prestige mm -hmm. drama. Listen, y'all. Uh, I know. don't... That's fine. I don't Hunter really want. Like, no, no fuck here's, that. here's the fine. thing. But I, and, and, you haven't even this, seen Oppenheimer yet, have you? I haven't seen Oppenheimer. I have seen Barbie. We should watch it. We should mm -hmm. watch it. Uh, here's the thing, though. I mm -hmm. think I have very particular tastes in movies, which I will not apologize about. These I are my types of movies that I love. That's okay. But I've noticed that, like, just in. In thinking about the things that I watch, I don't really watch like romance movies mm -hmm. sure. at all. I don't really enjoy them, and I all, and I think about this overall in the things that I love. Like with my music, I don't really listen to sad music. Mm -hmm. Sure, and I don't sure. really listen to like lovey music either. You, you don't like for me, it's party dance. Right. Like upbeat. you don't ex it, let yourself experience those emotions with that art. Some exactly. people, some people exactly. do listen to sad music right. some, because they right. they're experiencing those emotions right. with that art. Some people go to movies right. knowing they're going to be crushed, it's gonna be, and yeah. it's a great, you know, yeah, absolutely, right. But, and but, and I think that's just my taste. But, but I'll watch the shit out of comedies, sure. Like I'll go and support a comedy something. all day. Even even in that realm, do you have a favorite? Would you consider like a romantic film? Do you have a favorite? Um, I have I have kind of a cop out answer. I think maybe The Princess Bride, but it's not really. See, a, I don't like The Princess Bride. I don't that's like weird. That movie, that's weird to me. In general. I know. That's weird to me. I also don't like um, Fifth Element. That one I'm okay with. That one also I, I know, right? But Adam I, it's loves it. But Adam exactly. Loves it. So Adam's, just, Adam's gonna kick you off I just, the channel. I just watched it like a week ago. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> but we have different. But I'll tell you what. Yeah. I do love Chris Tucker in the Fifth Element. Oh my god. Even if I don't love that movie. Yeah. yeah. I, Look, it's, it's come undeniable. Come Bruce, there's, Bruce there's, Willis, yeah. Chris Tucker, like everybody, Gary right? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's it's Mila Gary Oldman. Come on, but you know, as a whole, you're not like that's my favorite. Yeah, film. yeah, exactly. The way exactly. Some people, you know, mm, let me see what other romance. Kind let me of give things. an example. Rom coms. I only just saw <clears throat> um, uh, 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 when Harry met Sally. I haven't like, seen that. That's yet. good. Like two years ago. Yeah, so, like I recently, loved it because it's one of Keller's and Chelsea's favorite yeah. movies. So I finally watched it a couple of years ago, and it is really solid. Yeah. It's really great, and it and it's funny because that movie feels like a typical rom com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you watch it, you're like, but what sets this apart is this chemistry is Billy Crystal yeah. and Meg, Meg Ryan. Ryan. Their romance story is not typical. So it's just like you. There's reasons why certain movies kind of rise to the top, the cream of the crop, yeah. over yeah. decades and years because they are really, really good. Just thought of one. Go. But it's kind of the same Go. actor. It's fine. Uh, you're shallow say, Hell. I fucking love Shallow it is Hell. Romantic. Shallow hell. I it fucking is romantic. love Shallow Hell. It's a comedy, but I think it's that, Jack you know, Black. when he's telling Jason Alexander, he goes, What if you were in love with Wonder Woman? Yeah. And, but she was invisible to everybody else. And yeah. Everybody told you you're mm. crazy. And he's yeah. like, I don't care because Wonder Woman would love me. Right. He's like, That's what I had with her. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly. That's romantic. I fucking love Shallow Hell. And School of Rock. Oh my God. That's another movie that's like deep Listen, in my life. If you don't love, love School of Rock, love, then love, love, it is a, that's it is a perfect Jack movie. Black, though. It is yeah. a perfect movie. That's fine. Let me guess. Do you like Nacho Libre, too? Uh, who would have yeah. thought? Yeah. Who would have thunk it? Yeah. Do I love Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. You, okay, going back to these, uh, these other categories, do you have a favorite kind of straightforward drama that you have seen and been like, that's a good movie? Even if it's not something you're rewatching. Uh, yeah, like Amores Perros. That there movie was a good one. There you um, go. That's a great answer. There's another one by Derbez. It's a Mexican one, but it's Batteries Not Included. Or yeah. what is it? Batteries it's Not Included? Family drama. Yeah, comedy. that was like a, a family drama kind of Very movie. emotional. Um, yeah. I know there's more, but... yeah. I've I we just here's the thing. I don't rewatch them a lot. And we don't think about I don't think about those kinds of movies mm, yeah. as often as I think about 
Ninja Turtles, Iron Giant, right, right, you know, right. Jurassic Park, like my my favorite yeah. genre stuff. I right, think right. as I'm getting older, I'm going more the opposite direction. That's fine. That's okay. Yeah, that's you know? fine. But I, w- I obviously still enjoy all this stuff, and right. it's yeah. like right. it dominates my life. I would say, yeah. mm-hmm. but I still, when I have free time, I'm not gravitating towards Iron Man one. And I'm rewatching towards, it again. Yeah. yeah, I'm gravitating more towards. I want to watch Insomnia or Memento or yeah. Yeah. Life Is Beautiful yeah. or a Wong Kar Wai movie yep. or fucking I don't know. Take your pick, yeah. you know. And and especially if it's something I've never seen before, yes. then I'm definitely leaning towards something that I yeah. haven't seen before. I agree. Or maybe it's something that's that maybe could be considered a cult classic that I haven't seen in a long right, time. Right, right, right. <laughs> what, whatever genre, whether it's horror or sci-fi or action or whatever. Dude, Biella, let me have it. Biella got us good. It I'm not gonna lie. Got me good. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm not gonna lie. The Biella, that's fair. Is, is this is this one of the yes. takes you don't like? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Biela said, doesn't like Fifth Element or Princess Bride. This was, for the most part, stuff. LMAO. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. That's yeah, okay. that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so. Sorry. Uh, I like what I like. I think sorry, I, I'm not I sorry. Think, I think I also... I think the thing that maybe kind of scares me a little bit is I don't want to feel like I'm just stuck in a particular era of movies. No, not at all. So that's right. why I'm like, right. okay... For for example, I didn't watch A Star Is Born, mm-hmm. the Bradley Cooper one that okay. came out with Lady Gaga. Okay. I was like, I don't want to watch it. I'm not into musicals. I'm not going to be into this like third remake of this story. Sure. Whatever. I sure. love Bradley Cooper. I like Lady Gaga. Sure. Whatever. Not for me. I watched it. And I went, oh, I was wrong. This is a really good drama. This yeah. is really heartfelt. It's emotional. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're really good together. Mm-hmm. Um, Did so you go back and watch the originals yet? No, I haven't. From diff- I think one's from the 70s, 70s and, and one's one from, from like the 40s, the 40s, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's so interesting. So yeah. I haven't yet. But I w- that was one of those moments. And I don't have those moments too often because usually I'm really open to watching almost anything. Yeah. But it was one of those moments where I was like, don't do that. Just watch it. You might like it. <laughs> sure. And if you yeah, don't, yeah. you don't. You watch something else. Look, yeah. at the end of the day, I think Adam's first love is movies. Yeah. Right, right. And, I, and I've, I've asked myself the question, Hector, is let me, your... Let me check. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I've asked myself the question. I'm like, Hector, is your first love mm-hmm. movies? And I'm like, shit, I don't know. It might be... It comic might be books. second. It might be yeah. comic yeah. books. It, yeah. That's the kind of thing I go <clears throat> and I keep revisiting or I'm so excited to read news. Like, but yeah. I will watch any movie in the world... Once. No questions yeah, asked. Absolutely. I'll watch it once. Mm-hmm. Any movie. Yeah. Because I do love movies so, right, so right, much. Right. But why do I love movies? Well, I love, you love like the art of it itself, the mm-hmm. history of it, the filmmaking, like the whole process. And I, I think I'm realizing as I get older, I'm like, well, the reason I love movies is because I fell in love with specific stories when I was a kid and they moved me. Things like Jurassic Park, yeah. you know, um, Steven Spielberg films or, um, uh, you know, the the action and adventure stories of mm-hmm. the 80s, your Indiana mm-hmm. Joneses or whatever. And then as I got older, I was able to loop the superhero world mm-hmm. into that love of like adventure films mm-hmm. and right. action mm-hmm. movies that mm-hmm. I really love and animated films that I fell in right. love with as a kid. So I've loved like the animation process. So mm-hmm. I'm like, even to get more specific, I might love animation more than film. I think right. that's where I am. Right, too. which yeah. just means we're just going to be drawn to more stuff over others. But animation yeah. is film, so. I, I, right, but it's that specific of right. like. That this, specific this, genre. Yeah, yeah. the because same way, yeah. I mean, all three of us were in the movie industry. Yeah. We're all there for a reason, right? Yes. Adam's the, the technical cinem- cinematography side. You and I both studied to be animators. We did. Right? And we that's did. kind of like our trajectory. Yeah. And so to me, that love of animation. So, so my background, before I decided I wanted to do animation, I was into hip hop. I was break dancing in high school. And yeah. I was also doing a lot of graffiti. I like a lot of gra- also doing a lot of drugs. Doing a lot, about of, to say. a lot of heroin. Doing a lot of drugs. <laughs> a lot of drugs. <laughs> yeah. A lot of heroin. Yeah. No, I was doing a lot of like graffiti and yeah. I was trying to be creative in the space where I didn't know what I wanted to do yet. Mm-hmm. And so through a push from my parents at the same time, Lord of the Rings had just come out and mm-hmm. I was just like, movies, they're doing stuff that I love to see happen. Yeah. I have yep. these skills that may translate over. I yep. was like... I will go into this field That's and I'll heart. try to make yeah exactly like yeah. I think creativity ultimately is what drives me yeah and seeing that kind of passion in filmmaking yes. I think is what drove me towards you, that you could watch what Adam described A Star Is Born mm-hmm. and I'm sure it's very creative and I'm sure it is a solid drama I still haven't seen it yet either and I'm like for not for a particular reason I right. wasn't like averse to it but I just haven't seen it yet yeah and I'm sure Augustine you could watch it but like there's no world 
where you will end up loving that film more than Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Right. Just because of the right. content. You said yeah. graffiti. I'm like, right. that's in, that's this yes. one. Yeah. That's not this one. But right. that's not to say you couldn't see it and appreciate it. Right, like, exactly. That was a great film. Exactly. I loved La La Land. That, that movie was go. fantastic. And that's kind of out of the norm. Yeah, that's comfort. way out of the norm, that's right? That. that movie was fantastic. I like that movie. So. I know it's problematic and people are like, they're not that good at dancers. I'm like, I know. I don't care. They're actors. They're I'm like, a it's, movie. Emma, it's Emma Stone. Doesn't, like, can I be honest were... with you? Most of the opinions that people have about movies, I'm yeah. like, I don't yeah. care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let's answer. If, if I like it, I like it. Let's we answer Ben's okay. question real quick. Yeah. We've got two more in the chat. So Ben Hernandez, homie of the channel as well. Thank you so much for hey, being ben. there. What's up, homies? What directors or cinematographers would you like to see helm the DCEU future projects? <laughs> well, first of all, it's not the DCEU, Ben. <laughs> Benjamin. Did, did Benjamin. Ben, did ben, ben write Benjamin. DCEU? Yeah, he put DCEU. But uh, it's okay. Uh, directors. I mean, I would like to just see a mix of new directors and yeah. established directors. Yeah, we need yeah. fresh blood. Yeah, I think fresh blood. And here's the thing. is like I have a whole laundry list of directors. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want them to touch a DC property if they don't care. Yeah. Yes. That's the, that's that's the God's really, honest yeah. truth. That's why my answer is Ava DuVernay. Mm -hmm. Because she was she working on New Gods. Gods. Yeah, with Tom and King. before that even came out, somebody asked her in an interview, who's your favorite superhero? And she said, Big Barda. Yeah. And mm. I'm like, who, yeah. the, who is this? That yeah. blew me away. Yeah, so the yeah. fact that she worked on it to a point where that's now her favorite superhero, mm. yeah. let her make that goddamn movie. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, cinematography is a little bit different because mm -hmm. cinematographers, they are more in charge of what, what it's supposed to look like. They're, they're in charge of translating the look and feel in a way that's pleasing to the audience. Yes. So, like, I can see Roger Deakins doing a DC movie. Yeah, for sure. I don't think I would picture i don't think i would could see sam mendez directing a dc movie right right you right. know what they I mean? normally work together yeah bond, I got it. bond I got is it. something that i think still yes. is it is superhero-esque no nah. but it's still a lot more grounded than a fantasy yeah you know it's a fantasy in its own regard yeah but i could see deacons you know doing the cinematography on a movie like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. same thing like hoyt von hoytema who works with christopher nolan mm -hmm. if he did cinematography on a dc movie it would look amazing like greg mm -hmm. fraser for mm -hmm. example incredible cinematographer who did, who did cinematography on dune Greg Fraser. Yeah. And he also did the Batman. There you Orange. go. So yeah, that's you go. someone yeah. who's like, yeah. listen, I just care about what's on screen. Yeah. And I'm all about the the image, the image, the image, yeah. Yeah. the beautiful dude. photography. And I'm like, yeah, if, dude, let him do another one. If Denis wanted to do a DC film, mm -hmm. that'd be mm -hmm. gorgeous. Denis, but you got to. And I think Denis Villeneuve <laughs> yeah. is one of those yeah. directors who, even though he did Prisoners and he did yeah. Dune, yeah. I think he would be open to the discussion. Mm -hmm. I agree. What I'm would you bring to the character? Yeah. Well, here's what I think. Yeah. And we don't know where they're, you know, where their heart is in in these kinds of things. So, yeah. uh, all 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 to, to go back to your point, we're like, if they want to do it, yeah, that's the they key. should do it. Brian Just Johnson like, and Steve Yedlin would be cool. Yep. Oh man, I agree. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Guess who I'm gonna say? Gandy Tartakovsky. Gandy. Of course. And Brad Bird. <laughs> and Peter yeah. Jackson. And, <laughs> and Peter. <laughs> no, not Peter. Okay. Yeah. Peter's doing his own thing. Right. Peter. Peter. Uh, Peter's yeah. in his own special little place. Peter's right. petering. Peter is petering. You know, Guillermo was supposed to do a DC movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro, yeah. Toro love could to see do it really good. Let James Dark let Justice. Do it. Pan's Labyrinth. I fucking love Pan. See, as yeah. we're talking, all these movies are and starting to pop up. that's fantastical, but that's also just like a great drama. Yeah, it's just a good drama. You know who's another great, to just go along with Eva DuVernay? Yeah. James Mangold. Ford well, versus do, Ferrari, he's and he's doing thing. Swamp Thing. He's doing Swamp Thing. I guess thing. he did do two Wolverine movies. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, if we want that kind of crossover, it's yeah. like, mm -hmm. dude, like, I don't know if Ryan Coogler would want to do a DC movie. Right. But what if James Gunn was like, Ryan, do you want to do the John Stewart Green Lantern movie mm -hmm. starring Sterling or K. Do Brown? Want, or do you want starring at least, Sterling K. Brown? Do that. Or do you at least yeah. want to direct the... Because Lanterns is a show, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You but want then, to do the pilot? <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? oh Something. Oh my uh, God. Mando Ranger, two bucks, thank you. Ryan Johnson doing The Question or Dr. Fate. Yeah, that'd be mm. yeah. solid. Bro. Yeah. Great Let's pick. do it. Yeah. I love Ryan Johnson. Great pick. I know. Um, yeah. Leppy also has another question. Thank you. This is Leppy's like, second or third wow. Super Chat. Wow, thank you thank so much. You. Uh, how about Tom Brittany for Batman? He was on the shortlist for Superman. He's oh. 33 years old, 6'2", uh, corn sweet. Corn, corn, corn sweat. Corn sweat. Corn sweat. Yeah, corn corn sweat, sweat. Yeah. He's 30 years old. Yeah. And 6'4". Six, four. Six, four. Who's Tom Brittany? Let me Google. Here's the thing. Yeah. Don't tell me a name. Tell me a name and a movie. The, what they've been in. What they've been in. Tom, Tom Brittany. Brittany. Show. Okay, so Tom Brittany. Because uh, if see. they look like Batman, but then I watch them and they sound like, yeah. I don't know what. Jason Statham. Yeah. What. <laughs> I'm like, boy, they <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Tom, Tom Brittany. Brittany. Jason Statham. Del Toro Swamp Thing would have been cool. Yeah. yeah. He, he was supposed Billy to do Justice League Dark famous. for years. He played Will in uh, Grandchester. 
uh, Unreal TV series, Greyhound. I don't think I've sounds seen any like of a, his projects. Sounds like a British actor. Yeah. I think and it is. what did I just say? <laughs> what did what I, just I just say? <laughs> what did I just say about say, these? Listen. Cross the pond. Oh accent happen. About these. <laughs> Oi. Oi. It's, What's that? it's a dark night in Gotham, isn't it? Oi. Oi. Listen up, Gordon. This is Jason Statham as Batman. I think we're going to be banned Jim. from the UK I'm now, so sorry. Guys. I know. We're banned Italy, from Italy, Australia, yeah. New Zealand, the United Kingdom. Can you check with Czech, please, yeah. to make sure we're just cool? Let me call into the... I'm just teasing. Let me pros him. <laughs> he might be an American guy, but he's just worked on stuff I'm not familiar with uh, yet. So. Have you guys seen Reacher? Do you think Alan Richardson would be a good Batman? Uh, no. You've been watching Reacher. No, I love yeah, Reacher. Reacher's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Too blonde and too big. Mm-hmm. He's too, like, uh, there's such a thing as an actor who's too big to play Batman. Too blonde, I'm sorry. Yeah, too big. I'm sorry. Like, she said the same thing. I know uh, fandom. Yeah. I know fandom just wants to see yeah. the most fucking jacked dude possible. Oh, of course. Be yeah. Batman, but it's yeah. like, it's okay. Look, it doesn't have to be. Look, I thought Jason Momoa was a little too buff in the suit. Yeah. A little too mm-hmm. buff and in it's, the suit. And it's yeah. like, especially if you're going to do just a bunch of padding and stuff. Yeah, right. They did like, a lot of padding. Like, Richin's going to be working out like crazy just for him to be covered up in <clears> some <throat> rubber. Ba- right. like, yeah. I'm like, don't do yeah. that. And if people are going to put him in a cloth, I'm like, that's going to look a little yeah, goofy. It's not 1978 I, I think Batman needs to be ninja. He needs to be ninja. Yeah. 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 I, can't, I think I you're can't, right. I can't see Jack Reacher crouching no. in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Oh, my pants ripped. The role is not just... I'm going to need a new convertible. Yeah, it's not just emergency. Emerging from shadows, yeah. like yeah. I think Christian Bale's physique was almost even maybe too big. Well, like he Batman got Begins. he got bigger, I know, and yeah. they said tone it down. Yeah, yeah. you're so a bear. Like, you know, Richin should. If you just want him to be in the DCU, yeah, sure, he could mm-hmm. be. Um, I don't know. There's there's tons of characters he could play, yeah. right. but right. with his villainous turn in Fast X, give him a villain. Give him a mm-hmm. huge villain that like. Batman has to, you know, not Bane. You got to give that to Latino. Yeah. yeah. But like Solomon Grundy. Solomon, <laughs> I don't know. The sexiest Solomon Grundy that's ever lived. A zombie. Change his face. You know. Solomon Grundy. <laughs> I don't know. Tons, All right, of, tons guys, of characters. We're at the hour mark. We, wait, we went we a little every... bit. Oh, yeah. Everybody's done. Are we you have sure? all the super chats chatted away. Thank you all. No, we got. Oh yeah, wait. Yeah, you're right. You're right. right. Everybody. I'm so so sorry. I've been watching the chat. Okay, good, good, good. Does anyone have any final thoughts on the DC extended universe? I like this conversation. We could have gone into more specifics with stuff. We still have next episode. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, Yeah. I like this general overview. I think overall thoughts is that I'm in kind of a hopeful place right now, just as a fan. I'm happy that some of it happened, but if. If you could give me a monkey's paw and be like, do you want and none of this to have ever happened and for them to do a completely different thing in 2013, I would absolutely oh, yeah. bend down that little finger. I'd be oh, like, yeah. let's do this. Yes. Let's start yes. over. Yes. Um, so I'm not going to say like, I'm glad it happened. Like, nah, dude, Aquaman 2 sucked. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah, I generally feel the same. I think there's a lot of like moments that I really enjoyed in the DC Extended Universe. Yeah. Some of them happened <clears throat> when they thought they were going in one particular direction. Some of it happened when they decided to completely course correct. So, and some of it was unexpected. And I thought, oh, wow, Blue Beetle's awesome. Whoa, where did this yeah. curveball come from? I know we didn't talk about Blue Beetle at all, <clears throat> yeah. but that's next episode. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk about yeah. Blue Beetle next episode. So, I, 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 think, awesome. I think there's some diamonds in Diamonds in the Rough. Um, I think for me, I'm really, I'm mostly happy with like how a lot of the casting happened. Yeah. For me, it's less casting and more about the writing for a lot of the characters yeah. Yeah. and just the story choices that they made. So I don't know if I would, I, I honestly don't know if I share that same opinion. Yeah. That you would wipe it all. Yeah. Because I think that now we're going into something where the studio, hopefully with the help of James Gunn, Peter Safran, they went, we fucked up. And, we need to write this wrong. And we don't know how good the DC universe is going to be. Right. Whatever that's going to be, it's absolutely going to be a reaction to what took place before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you can't yeah. have that without the other. Exactly. Yeah. You can't have gotten to that point. You can't right. have Brightest Day without Blackest Night. <laughs> oh, shit, son. Dang. All right, good you night, everyone. <laughs> Shut that shit down. Dang. I was going to say something, but that's good. No, that's go ahead. Say good. it. Say it. No. Say it, dog. That's good. Say it. Say it. I don't know Waterloo. if we want to end on this. Say it. Do it. Do it. Fucking R.I.P. Snyderverse, bro. I won't, <laughs> I won't miss you at all. Yeah. Glad you're gone and dead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Blue Beetle is probably my new favorite superhero. But it can survive. Yeah. Yeah. Without I, hope, it. I Yeah, I know. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, you know, 
uh, what is that old cholo saying? Don't be sad that it's over. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened, dog. Yeah, yeah. Like that, eh? Yeah, fucking you end go. it right there, there dog. There you like go. I like that. I like that. Cut it off, Lucas. Yeah. Lucas, uh, cut it off, Lucas. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you so much for the super chats. We will yes. be back next week where we do our tiered list of characters in the DC Extended Universe. Basically every character. It might, yeah, yeah, I don't know how we're going to do it in an hour, but we we'll have figure to, it yeah, out. We're going to have to go. Fast. We're gonna have to go really fast. There's 400 yeah. fucking characters. 200. Uh, oh my god, even worse. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, check out all the reactions that we've been putting out on the main Heroes Reforged channel. We have a bunch of uncut reactions as well on our Patreon for basically everything that we've been watching. Uh, good night. We love you. Have 